So what got you here won't get you there. Why did I pick this book? Simply because of the author, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. He's a renowned leadership guru, New York Times bestseller. And actually I have read this book a couple of years ago and I thought it makes a great read to reread it again because it contains timeless leadership wisdom. And Dr. Marshall Goldsmith has also endorsed my book, one of my books, which is called Get High, How to Coach Yourself for High Performance in Your Work. And it has been a great pleasure to interact with such a wonderful person. The other reason is leadership is a topic that I'm very passionate about. And as a CFO turned business and leadership coach, I have observed one common thread amongst the corporate leaders I work with. Everybody says, you know what, I want to be a better leader. And therefore, the subtitle of this book, which says, how successful people become even more successful was something that really appeals to me. And that's one of the reasons I picked this book. What did I like about this book? It's excellent. It's an easy read and very, very relatable. Not just that, it can be an eye opener regarding our leadership behavior. And it also highlights the benefit of working with a coach. So let me share a quick summary of the book. Highly successful leaders can become even more successful by making small behavioral changes and by working on overcoming their blind spots. Let me share this example that the author has given in the book. I love the story of Martin. Martin was a successful financial consultant in USA, earning a seven-figure salary, and he was known to be extremely savvy in his work. Once he was invited by a top US business titan for a one-hour meeting to explore how Martin can manage his portfolio. Martin was excited. Now, during the meeting, Martin shared with this guy on how good he was, what was his expertise, and how he was ahead of his competitors. The one-hour just flew by. The titan thanked Martin. And Martin was wondering, why did this meeting end so abruptly? And guess what? Martin never heard back from this titan. What do you think went wrong? Martin never bothered to check with his potential client on what his financial goals were, nor about his risk appetite, or what was it that he was looking for in a portfolio manager. And that's what happens when you're successful. Because leaders tend to think they have been successful why should I change? Because it's been working well. And that's what the author shares through this book. He says, people do one annoying thing in their job, which they don't realize. And this flaw may sabotage their otherwise golden career. They don't realize that it's happening with them. And they don't realize that they can actually get it fixed by working with a coach. He says, we delude ourselves by overestimating our contribution, taking credit and conveniently ignoring the failures that we had. So he shares about the four beliefs which have actually helped us to become successful. But these beliefs may actually be holding us back in our quest to move forward. What are these four? First one is, I have succeeded, right? So you tend to lean in the success of the past. The second one is, I can succeed. It's a belief that there's a link between what they have done already and how far they've come. But the author says, this is delusional. The third is, I will succeed. They say, he says, it's a, a tendency to be extremely busy and therefore you land up over committing yourself. The fourth one is, I choose to succeed, where he talks about cognitive dissonance, which refers to the disconnect between what we believe in our minds and what we actually experience in reality. And he's given a very nice example. Probably you think one of your colleagues is a jerk, right? So whatever actions this colleague does, you will be using the filter of a jerk. And therefore, that is what the cognitive dissonance is about. However, he says, People will change their behavior if it can be demonstrated that it's going to be in their best interest and defined by their own values. How do you 
identify the motives behind the self interest he says it normally boils down to four things which is money power status and popularity however at a deeper and higher level it could be things like leaving a legacy behind being an inspiring role model or creating a great company another very nice thing the book talks about is you know we are also used to having a to do list right he says how about having a to stop list so an example he gives is given the choice between becoming a nicer person or ceasing to be a jerk which is easier the latter because it's nothing more than an act of omission he says the higher you go the more problems you have with your behavioral skills with people he also adds none of us are immune to personal flaws but you may feel that you had no idea that things were coming across so what are these 20 habits you know wonderful 20 habits and i'm sure most of us can relate to at least one if not more you know this is some a good time for you to reflect on yourself so the first habit he talks about is winning too much he says it's a fine line of difference between being competitive and being overly competitive he says we tend to argue too much we are guilty of putting people down ignoring people etc so he gives a lovely example of a father trying to win a casual sports game with his 9 year old son he also gives another example you know we tend to fight with our spouse right you know i need to go to restaurant a when the spouse says no let's go to restaurant b and then finally you give in to the choice of your spouse you go to the restaurant b but guess what the food is bad it's overcrowded and you know you really didn't like the food and stuff like that so what do you do when you're having dinner i told you not to come here right many of us do that so he says all you just need to do is just shut up and have a good time there's no need that you know you need to go on harping about this do a cost benefit analysis and you'll know the relationship with your partner is a lot more important than just winning trivial arguments the second habit adding too much value he says it's a great idea but you know we tend to do that right at work because you're not letting the other person to share their views by doing that you may have improved the idea by 5% but reduce the commitment of your team member by more than 50% so make your people the winners and not by making yourself the winner the third habit is passing judgments people don't like to be critiqued so instead of being judgmental just say thank you the fourth is making destructive comments by making destructive comments you're not adding any value it, you may not remember but the other person is always remembering this so marshall goldsmith changed his habit he talks about his example where whenever he used to make a destructive comment he made his staff members to charge him with a penalty he also says would you tell your boss such destructive comments then why do you want to tell others that way the fifth habit is starting a sentence with no but or however when we do this the message that we are giving the other person is you know what you're wrong and irrespective of how you sugarcoat it this is the message that actually lands in the other person because you're no longer trying to communicate you're only trying to win it's a great idea what you've shared but you know what so that he says is the urge to be right the sixth habit is about telling the world how smart we are yeah i already know what you're saying right and by doing that you're not only boasting yourself but also you're insulting the person in front of you and you're probably better off you know not saying anything at all to them because being smart turns people on but saying how smart you are can actually turn them off the seventh habit is speaking when you're angry now the emotional volatility is not the most reliable leadership tool because what happens when a person is angry they tend to be out of control so however great a leader may be 
we tend to identify them and brand them with anger. So stop speaking when you're angry. The eighth habit is negativity or let me tell you why this won't work. You know, when somebody comes with an idea, that's what you say, right? So these are people who can't say anything positive or complimentary. It's an unadulterated negativity in the, guy, in the disguise of being helpful. The ninth habit is withholding information. By doing this, we are actually deleting the value. Now, these people tend to think revealing information puts them at a disadvantage. It may even be unintentional because we are too busy, we may tend to forget, or we delegate to people without teaching them how to do it. So the way to overcome this is just start to share information. The tenth habit is failing to give proper recognition. Successful people become great leaders when they learn to shift the focus from themselves to others. The eleventh habit is claiming credit when we don't deserve. Now, how would you feel if you didn't get the credit that you deserved? It's similar for others as well. The next one is making excuses. He says there's no excuse for making excuses. Because if we can stop making excuses, we can just get better at anything that we do. The next one is clinging to the past where we blame other people as an excuse for our own failure. So stop blaming others for the choices that you have made. The 14th one is playing favorites. Now leaders tend to say they discourage sucking up. But why does this happen at the workplace? So he relates it very well to say, you know, if you're getting home and you have a family to welcome you and also a dog, who do you go to more, right? The dog invariably. So he gives that as a nice analogy. The 15th habit is refusing to express regret. Can't you just say, I'm sorry? Because if you can't apologize, it's as good as saying, you know what, I don't care about you. And by saying sorry, you can actually turn your enemies into your partners. Sixteenth habit is not listening. Because when we fail to listen, we are sending the message that I don't care about you, I don't understand you, you are wrong, you are stupid, you are just wasting my time. Or it could be all of these. The seventeenth is failing to express gratitude. Just say thank you. Eighteenth is punishing the messenger. When someone gives us something that has a huge potential benefit and it costs us nothing, what do you do? Just say thank you. Nineteenth is passing the bug, blaming others for our own mistakes. It arises with the need that I need to be perfect and therefore dumping the mistake on somebody else. And the last habit he talks about is an excessive need to be me. That is not giving any positive recognition to their staff. You know, just saying that you've done a job very well, it's going to make people feel better. So he says, less of me and more of them is the success formula. As a bonus, he also talks about the 21st habit, which is goal obsession. He says by itself, it's not a flaw, but it can be the root cause of annoying behavior because it turns us into someone whom we shouldn't be. We are very nice to people who help us achieve the goals. So we hog the limelight and take all the credit. Then he moves on to talking about feedback. We all need feedback to see where we are and where we need to go so that we can measure our progress and 360 feedback is an excellent tool for that. He talks about three types of feedback. The first one being solicited feedback where you're asking people what is it we are doing wrong. But he says it will be good if this can be confidential so that there's no embarrassment and people can tell you the truth. The second is the unsolicited feedback which is what is not known to us but it's known to the rest of the world. And the third one is the observational feedback, which is the best of its sorts, because he says you can do it yourself by observing 
how other people are you know commenting about you what sort of behavior they are displaying and then listening to your own pseudo self depreciating comments looking homeward that is to see how your behavior is at home he also adds on about the importance of apologizing advertising by telling the world that you know you're creating a new you again he stresses on the importance of listening because he says think before you speak listen with respect and there's no need to multitask give the full attention without any distraction to the person with whom you're interacting then he says thanking appreciating and being grateful are again excellent traits and then he talks about following up what is that just ask the people around you how am i doing measure your progress and reminding people that they are actually helping us and then you know telling them that our efforts are actually you know towards imprinting in them and he also says remember not everybody is coachable this is also said in the book trillion dollar coach this is also an excellent read and then he is talking about practicing feed forward this is something an excellent technique because where you're asking a person it could even be a stranger for two suggestions for the future that will help you change your behavior that you want to change and he says importantly the only response to that should be thank you a great way to also share with your team is to come up with a manual how to handle me because you know you're telling your team members what exactly you want for them so in the end he says a very interesting thing which is he says most of the leadership development revolves around one false assumption that is we think that if people understand they will do it right but that's not true because he says most of us understand it's just that we don't do right i mean imagine if you want to lose some weight you know it's good to go on a diet you know it's good to exercise but how many of us actually do it right so that's what he says so to conclude what stood out for me in this book three things now i think he's also touched upon how these learnings can be used in our personal lives not just professional lives i think we can also start implementing it in our personal lives the second is he talks about how he managed to overcome some of the flaws that you know those habits that he's mentioned about and the third thing is i think this book can be a periodic refresher on behavioral self assessment right so it will be good if you can reflect on those habits and you know the other tidbits that the author has shared and periodically have a tab on yourself because you know yourself the best